Hi guys. Now, this is a bit different. I'm on my brake at the moment. Um, I wanted to do a lot more forward facing on the way down here. I wanted to start it the forward facing and then do this. Issue is, as it's England, raining. It's not so bad now, but when I was driving down here it was just knackered, so there's only a small amount of footage and that's over the Dartford crossing, so it's all I could do, otherwise it'd just be blurry through the rain, windshield wipers doing that all the time, so I was just like, oh, this is just going to go wrong. <laughs> but anyway, I'm in Eastbourne today. I'm down here in rainy, dreary Eastbourne. <laughs> but no, it's, uh, it's, it's not bad. It was a nice easy run, three hours, one minute driving time. By the time I finish my break, it's going to be the start of the rush hour. So joyful. I get to leave here during the rush hour. <laughs> I love that. I absolutely adore driving in the rush hour. I usually like to plan my breaks so as I miss the rush hour. But you can't always, it doesn't always work out. Now, tomorrow I'm starting at 1400. Now as you know I've been ill, so I've been down for the last few days. Thing is I've got no spare vlog material, I've got no film vlog stuff, nothing. This is my first day back at work vlogging for a, few, a fair few days. And because I've got a 1400 tomorrow, if I'm starting at say 10, 11, whatever on Friday, then I'm going to have no time to edit whatever I make tomorrow. So there might be a day missed again. Which is a, an annoyance, to be fair. And of course, in a few weeks' time, I go off up to Yorkshire. Now, from what I've been told by my other half, I think there is uh, Wi-Fi available. Um, I'm going to be taking my cameras anyway and doing a little, little bit here and there. I won't do something every single day because I'm away. I'm doing other things. But I'll make some content, add it together. I might mix a couple of days into one or I, I, I don't know I haven't got a clue but I shall see what happens um, if the internet access is one of those you have to pay whilst you're using it style thing I'm not gonna bother so I don't know what's gonna happen uh, so time will tell on that one I'm afraid um, going back to what I said yesterday I was not calling for a revote Kikoki I know some people are getting a bit confused I was not calling for a revote. A revote is one of those it undermines democracy. But what does need to happen is a discussion and a debate in the House of Commons, and then whatever legislation is agreed in the House of Commons needs to be passed onto the House of Lords to make it law, and go from there. Um, it seems relatively obvious that a Brexit will most likely occur because of how the referendum went and the fact that the referendum was done wrong. It's a question, not an election, but never mind. What do I know about it? Um, a lot of people are curious as to what will happen with Scotland. If Scotland continues on the path it is on to go independent to stay in the EU, given the North Sea oil and various other bits and bobs like that, they are going to end up being a pawn in the negotiations. You see, Scotland, on the grand scheme of things, has a very small population, and their gross domestic product on their own will barely show up on the EU's balance sheet. So, although the EU might initially be using Scotland as a pawn to say, well, no, 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 we'll take you, we'll take you, trying to scare England into thinking, well, the UK is going to be broken up. In reality, if the remaining parts of the UK start using Scotland as a bit of a pawn, well, yeah, you can have this, but you can't have that. You can do this, but you can't do that. We're going to keep hold of this, so on and so forth then all of a sudden the EU will start weighing it up and thinking, well, they can only hold a referendum on independence if Westminster says yes. And for what we'll get from Scotland, we're going to end up giving them a large amount of money. 
now there's what is it four billion I think it is Scotland get from the EU a grant or something from the EU I, I believe it's around that figure from what I've heard on radio for um, the thing is that money comes back from what goes from the UK to the EU and then the rebates and bits and bobs come back well the UK is no longer going to be giving that money to the EU therefore the EU is going to have to find that money from somewhere else so there's a lot of swings and roundabouts in that that is not what I'm worried about I have no concern in what is going to occur in that situation. My biggest concern, and it has been uh, noted in the comment section below my last one, is the fact that Northern Ireland will be dragged out of the EU. The Republic of Ireland will remain in the EU. It was symbolism of putting border controls back between those two is just insane. It's it will cause huge rifts. Um, things like the IRA will come back because this time they will be fighting to keep Northern Ireland, which primarily and ma majoritively voted to stay in the EU, they will try and get Northern Ireland to the Republic of Ireland there is going to be some serious things kicking off in that region. That's the one I'm concerned about. Um, but like I said, I'm not calling for a revote, a recount, a re-whatever. It's got to go through the House of Commons and it's got to go into the House of Lords. What does have to happen is the Conservatives have to come up with a leader who gets elected so that they can start doing what they've got to do Jeremy Corbyn would better bloody well walk away. His place is untenable. His entire shadow cabinet has buggered off. He has, what was it, three quarters of the party voted no confidence. It, oh, it, it's... It's just getting stupid now. It, it really is. It, it's just getting completely stupid at the moment. There needs to be an opposition and there needs to be a government. You need a leader on both sides. If the leaders have become untenable because of where they stood during the referendum, Cameron went, OK, I resign. Corby went, I'm not going to resign. I want power. I want power. I want power. It's really beginning to get pathetic. I mean, all his shadow cabinet are buggered off. It's, it's, it's just getting bizarre. It really is. But whatever, that's what's going on. Now, a lot of people have been asking questions about what will happen to the haulage industry. You know, what's going to happen in trucking in the UK? What do you think is going to happen? Rules-wise... Because I'm, I'm sure everybody's curious as to are we going to keep EU drivers hours and all that kind of stuff. Please remember, we have not left Europe. In order for this country to leave Europe, you're going to need something like 100 Saturn Space 5 rockets up and down the East Coast and blast us off into the ocean. Okay, we haven't left Europe. We have left a trading platform of European nations. Okie dokie. That means that there are a number of drivers and a number of companies in this country that still need to operate within the EU area. So, chances are, absolutely nothing is going to happen about driver's hours regulations or driver's regulations. It's going to stay the same. Interesting issue is that Eddie Stobart is able to undercut a lot of companies because a number of his trucks are based in a different country, in an EU country. Taxation reasons. Keeps costs down. Well that's just knackered them. Because if, if, if Britain does Brexit fully, <laughs> none of his trucks that are registered in a different country under the EU are going to be even remotely financially viable. 
initially what's going to happen is load volumes are going to decrease slightly so that might cause people like myself to look for company employment instead of remaining agency that's to be seen at the moment we're still part of the EU and everything is going to carry on as normal until such a point as we have left so for the foreseeable future not much is going to happen but volumes will drop so devout agency guys like myself will most likely look to go full-time with a company because it guarantees our income what will then happen is if the pound has gone down in value which it has and we all know it has we will be able to sell our goods to other countries that would otherwise not have bought from us or not have bought in such volume because of the strength of the pound now there could be a case for the devaluation of the pound even further a reason being is the EU trading bloc is roughly circa, I'm not going into the exact figure, but it's circa 500 million people. Roughly. America is just shy of 400 million people. China, over a billion people. So a trade agreement with America and a trade agreement with China and we're selling to more people. So if we devalue the pound, we're going to increase productivity. What will happen is there will be a small decrease in the amount of European trucks on our roads, but a large increase of skellies, of containers. The reason being is that at the moment, a lot of products we buy come from the EU, a lot of them come from Europe. So European firms, haulage firms, take those products, trundle, 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 straight across from Calais, into Dover, into the country, lovely doubly, back they go. Well, if that trade decreases, which it will, and trade from America, China, Japan, Australia, Canada, wherever, increases, well, they're going to be shipped in on container, most likely to the East Coast ports and South Coast ports. And then companies, scaly operators, will start to increase. The, the volume of those vehicles will increase. So the only realistic change is most likely going to be left hookers disappearing, right hand drive container wagons taking their place. The thing is, in any recession, or anything that could lead to recession, there is a standard framework of dealing with it. First of all it's quantitative easing if your currency hasn't dropped. That's to bring your currency down to make it more likely that people will trade with you. That boosts productivity. The more productivity you have, the higher volumes of goods that need to be transported are. You see, the trucking industry is one of those really weird industries. It seems to be counterintuitive to what's going on. In order to get out of recessions and out of bad financial situations as a country, generally you've got to increase productivity you have to increase productivity whether that's you know building more houses and stuff like that government funded or whether that's you know devaluing your currency and trading with everybody a lot a lot more productivity goes up so when the economy starts to go down as a general rule loads tend to start to go up so it's one of those really odd, this industry is really odd. When it's perfectly fine, loads are kind of level. You get the odd fluctuation here and there at times of year. When things get a bit rough, because productivity has to be increased, loads increase. A lot of truck drivers watching me are of an older generation. They would have gone through a couple of other recessions. Maybe some of them are old enough to have gone through some of the stuff in the 70s, some will be older, probably far, far more of them will be older to remember the ones in the 80s. The thing is, they maintained work, predominantly. A lot of them got a bit more work. It is really an odd industry. Because 
we are not controlled necessarily by the economy going down or going up. We are controlled by the volume of goods being produced. So what's likely to happen is initially a trailing off of volumes primarily affecting the agency sector. But then once we understand who's going to lead and who's going to be doing what and who we're going to be trading with and that kind of stuff, that will increase volumes. Now we might have to quantitatively ease, we might have to bring our, the value of our pound down. That will increase the price of things, but it will increase productivity. One thing that might have to happen is dissolving this basic minimum wage. Now the basic minimum wage is a bit of an issue. The older generation will have seen the basic minimum wage come in and the flat rate, the hourly rate, go up a bit for the people who are going on the new contract. The younger generation have only ever grown up with it. My generation can tell you exactly what happened. We started our working life on a new contract versus an old contract. And we could do the same hours, the same days, the same aisles, the same, well the same job and end up earning slightly less than the people on the old contract because the people on the old contract got the overtime over eight hours, the time and a half Saturday, double time Sunday, triple time bank holidays, all that kind of stuff which the basic minimum wage has completely destroyed. So when a Brexit occurs there may end up being a getting rid of the basic minimum wage but that's to be seen that is uh, that is just a you know I'm throwing a dart a dartboard at the moment you know I'm just going and seeing what happens yeah. it's a maybe but anyway there we go I've prattled on for a little while longer but there have been a few questions asked of what do I think is going to happen in the haulage industry to be fair I think it's going to be a bit tea tree for a while but then once we realize who we're going to be trading with what's going to be discussed what the realities are going to be we're going to have to increase productivity in order to have a chance whether we opt to stay you know overturn the referendum or whether we opt to leave we've got to increase productivity that has to happen whatever happens so we shall see but I do believe that we are going to see a decrease in European vehicles on the roads and an increase in container vehicles. Uh, but there we go. Anyway, I'm going to crack on with the rest of my day. This is going to be a, a relatively short one. If I can get some more forward facing footage because the rain subsides, I will do. But I don't, I don't think I will because it's been steady all day long. So thanks for watching guys, like, subscribe, share about, do whatever it is you usually do and I shall see you in the next one which will most likely be tomorrow but like I said it's a 1400 start, if I work late and have an early one on Friday I'm not going to have the time to edit it. So cheers guys and just uh, bear with me for a little while, thanks.